Hey, it's Travis with Oscar Mike Radio. How are you doing? Uh, trying out something new tonight. First of all, it's not Thursday, it's Friday, and I'm just doing this before the air date. But if this works out, it's going to symbol something, signal, excuse me, something new where with uh, my cell phone and my Zoom H6, I'm truly getting ready to podcast anywhere and everywhere. Not that I couldn't before, but Marines believe in any climb in place, and I'm trying to raise my game in that regard. Oscar Mark Radio is sponsored by ASAC Real Estate, Joyce ASAC of ASAC Real Estate in Brockton. Go see her. Mark Holmes of Reaper Detailing and Power Washing. Get Reaperfied. And last but not least, new for 2020, Cage Titan Champ. Red Seal Martial Arts owner, operator, instructor, and all-around badass, Sean Schubert. Thank you very much for your support. So this is uh, the Valentine's special. And if you know me, you know I love talking about this day. <laughs> Especially when I make this day with uh, Jody, that lovable Lothario, who uh, takes care of your wife and girlfriend while you're deployed out in the field around 200 other men. You're not getting the action, but Jody is. And I kind of changed up a little bit this week, so it's Valentine's Day. And if you're watching, well, I commiserate because I don't have a Valentine's either. That's a long story, and I'm good with that. If you are watching this and you have a Valentine's, well, something didn't go right. I feel for you. Um, and this one's kind of a sad one. This is kind of a sad one. Um, and, and the Jody podcasts are, are not designed to be anti-women, uh, even though you know your wife and girlfriend is cheating on you while you are deployed. Or if you're uh, a guy and your wife and girlfriend cheat, that's very terrible. And if you're a female, it's the same thing. Uh, I, I really, you know, take umbrage with anybody who uh, does that to uh, their spouse. But in the military, it's a special kind of pain. Again, you're you're in the middle of the jungle. You're in the middle of the ocean. You're under the ocean. You're you're in an air base somewhere, working 12, 14, 16 hour days, and um, somebody else is making sure that you know he's working that. Uh, over and not in a good way they're not having prayer service and i, I kind of want to do these from the aspect of hey this stuff really happens because i've had women tell me this doesn't happen you know no way we're not like that uh-uh and the the podcasts in the past are not based on anecdotal evidence or you know buddies sitting around drinking and crying in their beer these are, are real things that have really happened that have had a negative impact on the people that they affect and as you know i'll get into this one you will have to agree with me that infidelity is not a victimless crime at all and you know whether you're a civilian or military you get cheated on you have to pick yourself back up, and some of my brethren, when I was in, handled that very poorly. With some very bad negative coping mechanisms that were available to them. Some of them, I mean, 20 years later, are, are you know, really crushing it in life. They have their own business. They have another wife or girlfriend. They have the kids go on. Some of them have grandkids. It's hard to believe. But, you know, they have... They, they did the work on themselves, internalized it, got help when they needed it, and, and made themselves better. And, you know, again, this one's a little differently. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm kind of picking on, you know, the, 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 um, the, 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 the wife or girlfriend who cheats on her husband or boyfriend and gets caught doing it. There have been some uh, nasty stories around that. And when I say nasty, not, not in a good way. It's very bad. This one is a real sad one. It's, it's really um, kind of hit me and, you know, I'm going to get real serious here because th this was 
this was not a, um, let me see if I can pull it up here real quick. I thought I had my one note available. There we go. There we go. 186 uh, Jody. Ah. I kind of like this. If I get the microphone like worked out, like, like here's my zoom. And here's what it's doing. Uh, and, and so what's happening is while the camera, uh, my cell phone is filming me, I'm getting audio on my, my Zoom right here, and I'll be able to pull that into DaVinci Resolve and kind of made it all up and hopefully sound good. And, and again, th this, this takes, this collapses the amount of gear I have to carry. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. So this story came out in the New York Post this week, February 11th by Amanda Woods. I'll have a link in everything to do with Oscar Mike Radio. Look me up on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Like and subscribe. And the story goes, wife murdered by husband's mistress forgave her moments before killing. Now, I don't care if you're in the military or not. That's a pretty, like, it's a very good tagline. I mean, it draws you in. It certainly did it to me. And the story starts off with saying that a woman forgave her killer, her husband's mistress, moments before her brutal death on her hubby's orders. Michael Walker, 40, a former army medic who was stationed in Hawaii, was sentenced Monday to 35 years behind bars for plotting the November 2014 stabbing of his wife, Catherine Walker, at their home in Honolulu. Michael's lover, Alyssa Jackson, 29, who committed the killing, was given a 30-year sentence. So this happened about five and a half years ago. So Alyssa would have been, you know, almost 24, 23, 24. He was 35 and, and did this. And it took six years to have justice handed down. And I'm reading this and I'm like, you know, I'm told all the time, well, this, this doesn't happen. You know, you're just making this up or you're trying to find stories about you know, negative things instead of being positive. And again, the reason I talk about Jody in the aspect of infidelity is not only does it have a negative impact on the service member going through this, it has negative impact on the, the family. It can negatively affect the unit, and it can be, you know, hard for the family, especially if you have kids. But this is a different take on this. This is one of my brethren being bad, and I only felt it right, you know, look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are some of my, my, my brothers and sisters who really get raked over the coals in their relationships. They're just trying to do the right thing to the nice people, the good people. And they get taken advantage of by people who don't care about them. And it's sad, you know, that they get hurt like that. But, you know, for every good one of those, there's a bad one. And Michael Walker is about as bad as it gets. And, you know, I have the article there. But the, the article goes into, you know, detail about the fact that the reason they kind of wanted to do this is... They were looking for uh, to start their new life over, and he needed the four hundred thousand dollars in life insurance, which is kind of weird because one of the uh, episodes I did in twenty nineteen talked about this. Uh, two people serving the army started having an affair. The wife um, wanted the husband's death benefit because he served in the army, so she had her, uh, you know boyfriend, lover, affair, partner, whatever you want to call him, you know, kill him. And, you know, they were able to find out on Snapchat what they were doing. And so now you have a mother without a child and a father who is gone. The child was 18 months old at the time, but it was just for the same thing. It was for the, for the $400,000 in life insurance. Just, just sad. Just sad. And... I think the thing, again, out of this that really gets me is, according to the prosecution, Alyssa here is on record as saying, 
I forgive you, right before um, Alyssa, I mean, Catherine Walker is on record as saying, I forgive you, before Alyssa stabbed her. Now, I, I don't know about you, it's Valentine's Day, and I don't have a girlfriend, and I'm, I'm fine with that, although, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to having one. <laughs> all things considered. But, you know, with all the pain and suffering and terrible people out there, what kind of person was Catherine Walker that, that, that she forgave somebody before she killed her? And I don't know about you, but, you know, as a guy, that's the kind of woman I kind of want by me for the rest of my life. And that's the kind of woman that I would, you know, want to work and ensure that you know, we, we we're, we're a team and we're together. And that's a woman whose life was extinguished in my view way, way too soon. Way too soon. So I'm sitting here reading this and, and again, usually it, it's, you know, uh, girlfriend getting caught, you know, with um, having a baby that's not her boyfriend's wife up and taking the kids, ex-wife suing the husband for child custody while he's in a submarine and can't defend himself. Those are usually the kind of stories I I tell. And there's tons of them once you start knowing where to look. And it's all true. But this one had a real impact on me uh, this this Valentine's Day. Not so much for the uh, terrible, terrible thing that happened to Catherine and her family. And it was terrible. And I hope, um, I I don't know why this guy didn't get thrown in prison for life. But he didn't get life. And if he lives to 75, he'll get out or be on parole. Hopefully he dies in prison. That wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. But I just don't understand, you know, why Catherine was able to do that. And, you know, what a special person she must have been to be able to do this. And I can't imagine what it was like for her family to have to wait six years, six years to get justice served. I, I don't understand why that took so long. It doesn't go into, um, you know, the details behind that. Uh, Alyssa was diagnosed with uh, a schizoaffective disorder and not taking her medication at the time because of a lapse in health insurance. She still stabbed, you know, and killed this woman. So I don't really, I'm empathetic, but sorry, you you, you did this. And I I don't know, I mean, if if we're not going to use the death penalty, I mean, it'd be perfect for a case like this. I don't understand why um, he got 35 years. Seems kind of light to me. So again, you know, uh, for some of us in the military, some civilians, Valentine's Day is kind of a stark reminder that, uh, you know, life can be unjust and unfair. And as beautiful as love is, it's also a cruel thing. And to me, <laughs> Valentine's Day is kind of a bogus holiday to me anyway. I mean, seriously, if you as a, a girlfriend or wife, you know, need your man to step it up and perform, as I've heard some women say on this one day, well then, you know, what are you doing? And, and yeah, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing that he would want to, you know, make sure you feel validated on this day? Because that's all this is. Come on. He got me this special card. Look. I'm going to tell you ladies right now how this works. He goes to the the Walmart or the CVS or the, you know, Walgreens aisle or, or wherever there's, you know, Valentine's Day card. He remembers that your favorite color is like peach or blue if, you, if you're doing good. And he says, hmm, well, that card there has a bunch of writing on it that looks all mushy-gushy. I'll get that one. Or that one has kitty cats on it. That one has puppies on it with a heart on it. Bam, done. Maybe there's guys out there that look for, you know, between 10 and 20 different cards to find the perfect card. But most of us guys are like, you know what? Puppies, Valentine's Day's heart mushy stuff inside two bucks done 
because if we're really serious about, you know, saving the trees and recycling, would you really want a paper card you're going to read once and, and, and throw away anyway? I mean, seriously, ladies, how many Valentine's Day cards have you saved? If you've been with a guy for 5, 10, 15 years, every one of them, I doubt it. I doubt it. So, I don't know. Sometimes this whole Valentine's Day thing, when I'm hearing my sisters or, you know, my, my friends, you know, having to deal with this, it's kind of like legalized extortion. To get, make sure feelings that you can't quantify are validated. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, and if I'm wrong, it means I've met the right kind of gal. And for all my faults and flaws, she's decided that, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give this guy a chance at love. We'll see. I don't know. Regardless, I'm having a good time. I'm having a great time doing this. I'm shutting down 186 now. You should be uh, on your way out of work, getting ready to uh, have a good time tonight. And if you're not, I'm right there with you. Enjoy your peace and solitude. It's a priceless thing. I'm Travis. This is Oscar Mike Radio, and we are locked through lunch.